was on K-State as Derek Brown turned into a real monster with three touchdown romps. The treat for Colorado came in Norman on Saturday. The Buffaloes put some nails in OU's coffin as Darian Hagan tricked the Sooners for 34 points. CU would love to reach into that Big A championship bag of tricks for a third straight year. But today, the Wildcats will try to steal their bag of goodies and give the folks in Manhattan a big treat. We're located at Wagner Field on the campus of Kansas State University for the Big 8 Game of the Week. Today, the Kansas State Wildcats host the Colorado Buffaloes. Hello again, everybody. I'm Dave Armstrong, along with Dave Lapham. And certainly, there is a full moon rising over Manhattan right now. And the Wildcats have been howling over the last couple of weeks, Dave. And I guess to keep with this Halloween theme, we should ask the question, does Kansas State have enough to scare Colorado today? Well, Kansas State thinks that they do, Dave, but thinking it and proving it are two different things. Now, they played a great football game against Nebraska in Lincoln last week. And what they're going to have to do to compete with Colorado today is play that type of football game. It was almost perfect execution. They did not give the football away. They were penalized very few yards. They got the field position battle on their side of things. They won the game in that respect. They played almost a perfect game, and they competed with a team in the top ten. To compete with a team like Colorado, they're going to have to play with that kind of effort today. Well, Bill Snyder, the head coach of the Wildcats, says it's show-and-tell time for his team. Let's go down on the field. The Kansas State fans are believers right now, aren't they, Brian Nooner? That's right, Dave. Excitement is in the air. You can feel it. There's a sellout crowd expected today here at Wagner Field. Everyone wants to see if this Kansas State team is going to be for real after that uh, strong showing last week against Nebraska. Uh, Kansas State has something at stake today. They have not lost a game on this new surface here at Wagner Field. I'll give you uh, additional reports from the field throughout the day. All right, Brian, we'll look forward to that, and certainly Bill Snyder will look forward today to another fine effort from his Wildcat team. And if they're going to beat Colorado today, Snyder knows they've got to stop number three, Darian Hagan. Well, I think for the most part, people would agree that you have to uh, be able to control Darian Hagan. I don't think anybody's going to completely stop Darian, but I think, uh, you know, he offers so many things to the ball game. He's become a very accomplished passer. I think his accuracy has improved immensely and throws the ball extremely well. And then there's probably not a better option quarterback in the country. Uh, so and I think, uh, you know, he's, he's a threat to you so many ways. He can throw it, uh, certainly what he does on the option, and, and certainly when he's a scrambler. You know, when he has to pull the ball back down and, and run with it, he's equally as uh, dangerous. I think uh, we have to be able to hold our own on the, on the line of scrimmage, both offensively and defensively. I think that'll be a, a tremendous factor in the ball game. And thirdly, I think, as always, you know, we have to win our share of the battles in the kicking game. And uh, if, we can, if we can do those three things, then I think it probably gives us an opportunity to take the ball, ball game into the fourth quarter for sure. Dave I, Dave, I think the biggest key is stopping Hagan. I mean, he is the story of the game. Even when you have Colorado well defensed on third and long, Darian Hagan has the athletic capabilities to make something happen. The master improviser in college football, great athlete. Let's face it, when we first saw this game on our schedule, we didn't think it was going to be much of a ball game at all. Bill McCartney was looking to dominate Kansas State once again, but the Kansas State success has caught the attention of Bill McCartney as he talks about his keys to the game today. I think the uh, key for us when we're on defense is that we don't give up a big play, whether it be on the run or the pass. I'm reminded of our Missouri game a year ago, uh, that famous fifth down game when they threw the ball over our head three times. And that's really what made that game close. And so I'm concerned about that, keeping constant pressure on them. Uh, over on the offensive side of the ball, our ability to make uh, successful yardage on first down is going to be critical to the success that we have. Uh, Kansas State only has six sacks on the season. So if we're having success on first down, we should have time to throw the football when we want to throw it. And uh, even though we're without a couple of receivers, we have good receivers and we should have success in the passing game. And in the kicking game, uh, I think return yardage is going to play a role in this game. We're currently at like 102nd in kickoff returns. That's got to change. We got too good a talent. Uh, on our squad and on, on that kickoff roster not to be ranked higher. 
And so hopefully we can get some productivity there. And in, in punt returns, we've been excellent, but we've shot ourselves in the foot a lot with key penalties. And so we're looking to have some success return punts without penalties. It's interesting. They both talk about the kicking game. What do you think is going to happen today? Well, I don't know. I, I, Darian Hagan, once again, scares me. I mean, but they've got Michael Smith to neutralize that. I think that is going to be one of the big keys, though. Who wins the field position battle, lengthen, lengthens the field for the opposition, shortens, shortens the field for themselves. Well, the Kansas State fans have been partying for a long time, partying after that big victory over Kansas State. The tailgate parties continue here in Manhattan. Will they party again today against the Buffaloes, and will those goalposts come down? Prime Network's Big 8 Conference Game of the Week is brought to you by Sports... ...are available on most Prime... Welcome back to Manhattan. It's the four and two Buffaloes taking on the four and two Wildcats. No surprise for Colorado to be four and two, but a mild surprise for the Wildcats to be with that kind of record and also getting votes in the top 25 rankings. The weather couldn't be more ideal. A cloudy sky, a light mist that fell all night long, but it's not raining right now. There is about a 20% chance of rain today, a high humidity and a very light wind here in Kansas where the wind can blow strongly. As far as this series is concerned. It dates back to 1912. Colorado leads overall 34, 12, and 6. And uh, last year, that 64 3 is certainly something that sticks in the minds of these Wildcat players. They felt that Colorado rubbed it in a little bit last year in Boulder. In his 10th year as head coach of the Buffaloes is Bill McCartney. McCartney with an overall record, as you see, of 61, 48, and 2, and a recipient of a 15 year contract. He will be the all time winning coach in Colorado. Colorado history before he is done. And the uh, co-coach of the year in the Big Eight Conference was Bill Snyder. He and Bill McCartney shared that honor. Bill Snyder now guiding the Wildcats in his third year with an overall record of 10 and 18. Colorado will be receiving to start things off. Kicking off for Kansas State is Warren Clausen. And back deep for Colorado is Eric Mitchell and Chris Hudson. Kansas State's defense will be tested early. Hudson has it at the five. He doesn't get to the 20. at the 16. The quarterback of the Colorado Buffaloes in his senior campaign, number three, Darian Hagan. And Darian Hagan ranked fifth in the nation in passing efficiency, mainly in part, 10 touchdown passes, only two interceptions, a 5-1 ratio. It's going to win you a lot of games. Darian Hagan, a senior specialist, and many feel like he was the difference in the game against Oklahoma last week in Norman. So first and 10 for the Buffaloes from the 17-yard line. at the line. They give it to the fullback Hill, a big hole in the middle, and he gets all the way up to the 31-yard line, and a penalty flag comes down, perhaps a face mask call, as the line judge threw in a penalty flag there to tack on perhaps five more against Kansas State. James Hill, a big gain on first down. It is a face mask call against Kansas State. A five-yard penalty. Colorado offensively will feature a freshman at tailback, Lamont Warren. And he could be the difference in the game with his 4-3 speed. That speed on the perimeter, Colorado will feel, will take its toll. An inexperienced line, except for the center, Jay Lewenberg. And he's one of the best in the country. Broke his right hand, started snapping with his left, didn't miss a beat. A real talent. Back snapping with his right again, although that right hand is broken. And a cast that allows him to snap the ball to Hagen on first down. Again, the give to Hill. This time, not much doing. About three or four yards on first down. Defensively for Kansas State, up front, you've got to look for Elijah Alexander to come from the outside. And he's a big play guy. He's got four sacks for the Wildcats. They expect him to be a big factor. And at linebacker, besides Brooks Barta, don't forget senior Joe Boone. Joe Boone's got almost as many tackles this year as he had in his career coming into the season. He's playing very well in the and middle. Bill Snyder thinks Jamie Mendez is one of the best in the conference. He gets everybody covering the right people, a very heady ball player. 
Second and seven for Colorado. The ball at the 39-yard line. The pitch back. Warren has it. Looking for a hole. Not much doing as Barta hangs on and stops him after a gain of three. Well, interesting, Dave, in, the, in that Colorado hammered the ball between the tackles to make Kansas State respect that fast of the game. Colorado feels that Kansas State is worried to death about their perimeter speed, so they want to make sure that they're not negligent in the middle, trying to play a little smash-mouth football early. Now they're taking it to the outside a little bit. Third and three. Third and three. And they're going to stop the clock. A timeout requested. Robbie James came into the game and called timeout. So Colorado, perhaps a little bit confused here in the early going against Kansas State. A good crowd on hand here in Manhattan today. They're expecting a crowd of over 30,000. And for Kansas State standards, that is uh, uh, much improved over last year's crowds, which averaged only in the 20s. And I can remember coming here not so long ago when there were more fans from the opposing team than there were from Kansas State. But today, a lot of people clad in purple. Here's how the teams stack up as far as uh, what they're doing offensively and defensively. And you see where Colorado is a little bit more balanced where Kansas State loves to go to the air. The thing that uh, jumps out at me, Dave, is the turnovers. Colorado plus six, Kansas State minus six. That can't happen today. That kind of a ratio differential can't happen today for Kansas State to stay in this football game. Yeah, Kansas State got away with that against Kansas right. with six turnovers. They can't do that against Colorado. No way. Colorado's too potent. They went on two 99-yard drives against what I thought was the best defense in the Big A caught at Oklahoma's last week. What's the call from Gary Barnett, the offensive coordinator on third and three? Hagan rolls out. Hagan's got some room. He's got a first down. A flag comes in as Hagan gets to midfield. Roderick Green came up from his quarterback position to make the stop. May have a hold on the perimeter there. The flag was thrown before the contact was made on Darian Hagan. They may have called Colorado with somebody leading around the corner with illegal use of hands. Our referee today. Oh, blocking below the waist. That is going to go against Colorado. Our referee is Larry Fisher. McCartney doesn't like that call. Let's see if we can see who is blocking below the waist. Let's see if we can see who is coming back in, cracking back in from the perimeter. Remember, when you crack back, you cannot hit below the waist. There it is on the lead block on Brooks Barta. And they called that. Oh, it was downfield. It was the second block coming back out from in from the perimeter wide receiver downfield cracking back on the inside linebacker when you do that you have to hit them above the waist not below Bobby James bringing the signal into Darian Hagan this is third and long for the Buffaloes third and 16 Colorado needs to get to the 47 they're at the 30 I think Jamie Mendez was the was the defensive player that got illegally blocked Hagan rolling out looking to throw fires it downfield looking for Johnson his fingertips incomplete. The pass was there. Johnson couldn't hang on. C.J. Masters on the coverage. C.J. Masters got a little lucky there. Uh, he couldn't really find the football. Couldn't locate the football as quickly as Johnson did. But uh, ultimately an incompletion. Darian Hagen rolling to the perimeter, giving him that run pass option where he's dangerous. He just airs it out. Masters trying to find the ball, and, and uh, Johnson makes the adjustment to the football, but it just bounces off his hands. Lucky break for Kansas State. Mitch Berger on the punt, averaging over 40 yards per punt, and back deep to get it. Michael Smith, number 88. He can be dangerous. Play clock is down to five. That one almost blocked. Smith's going to get away from it. It looked like Thomas Randolph had a good shot of blocking that, and then he pulled back at the last second. I think it affected the punter, though. It affected Berger anyway. He, he didn't get full extension. Watch. Does not get full extension. He thinks that ball may be blocked, and uh, he really pulls, pulls away. It was Thomas Randolph that, that affected his... Uh, his follow through on that punt. The quarterback of the Kansas State Wildcats enjoying a lot of success over the last five quarters is Paul Watson. Four touchdown passes in the last five quarters. He only has four on the season. Now you look at Watson's numbers as he gives off to Gallon. Gallon looking for a hole still on his feet up to the 38. 
Kansas State will be looking a lot to number 88, Michael Smith. And he's the competitor, Dave. He's had his two best games of the season against teams in the top 10, Washington and Nebraska. And uh, an experienced line, except at center, where Quentin Newyer may be one of the best newcomers in the conference at Very Sophomore. Bitterly disappointed last week in Nebraska native. He wanted to beat those Cornhuskers in Lincoln badly. It's second down and five yards to go for Kansas State. The ball marked at the 38-yard line. Watson wants to throw on second down. He's got his receiver of completion as Michael Smith with his first catch of the day, and it won't be his last. Ronnie Bradford made the stop. And a first down for Kansas State. Defensively for Colorado, Gary Gibbs calls Joel Steed the best nose tackle in the country. And I'd second that. He's, he's one of the tops, and that's where it starts is right up front. Chad Brown, it, they'll expect him to rush the passer. He's got five and a half sacks on the season. And Greg Thomas already has an interception this year. And the senior leadership is invaluable. First down for Kansas State. The ball at the 47 of KSU. Three wide receivers in there for Paul Watson, who's audibleizing now at the line. And the give us to Dallin. He's got a first down. Dallin galloped all the way to the Colorado 39. Nice call. Nice call. It was a check with me at the line. Look at number 34 in the white. He's rushing upfield. Chad Brown rushing the passer. They noticed his wide alignment. Quarterback Watson audibleized to a draw there. As he's running upfield, the running back's running underneath his pass rush. Great way, good thinking, great way to slow down the stand-up outside linebackers, defensive ends, whatever you want to call them, that are going to be pressuring the quarterback. Draws and screens. Gallon with 18 yards already today. We'll see what he has done this year. Gallon on the roll again. This time he's not going to get back to the line, or is he? Yeah, he'll gain about one. Ron Wolfork came up to make the stop. Wolfork couldn't hang on, and Gallon squirmed his way for a gain of one or two. Nice play all the way up and down the defensive front. They all played off their blocks really well, refusing to be hooked. Did not let the uh, offensive people get outside position on them and strung the whole thing out. Gallon's going to make a nice offensive coordinator someday. He's played wide receiver, quarterback, fullback, and now running back. Boy, the more you can do, versatility is a big, big plus. Second down and a long nine. Quick hitter out to the flat. That's Hernandez. And we got a flag that comes in. Hernandez down to the 25. I think a face mask is going to be called against Colorado. I think it is too, Dave. And I, I don't think it's going to be of the 15-yard variety, but that, they may debate about Look at it. I'll tell you, Fernandez, is, nobody's covering him. He's wide open. Watson the start right away. Thomas is trying to get over there late. There's nobody there. Thomas is the one that yanks in that face mask as he tries to bring him down. It was amazing, though. They're saying, they're saying no flag now. They're saying that that wasn't a face mask that he grabbed the, grabbed helmet. the helmet. Right, instead of the face mask and get up in that area. That is a dangerous area, but how can how can Colorado, there's a brain cramp there big time. How can they leave Hernandez wide open? Now, Thomas is struggling to get over there real late. They left him wide open on alignment at the line of scrimmage, a primary wideout. Hernandez has now caught a pass in 28 straight games. First and 10, Kansas State at the Colorado 25. Colorado has uh, allowed their opponents to score on only 10 of 19 inside the 20. Watson being pressured gets away from it. Uh oh. Leads up a duck. And that's out of bounds. Picked off by Dion Figures. And I think that one slipped out of the hands of Watson. Watson made a great play just to get away from Thomas to start the, to start off. I thought that there could have been a little bit of little bit of pushing off, uh, some interference to try to get after this wounded quail. I mean, this ball just slipped out of Watson's hands, but uh, they came with a safety blitz. Colorado did. Greg Thomas, you see him the, uh, the left hand side of the screen, number 27. He comes in untouched. Strong safety blitz. Watson athletically makes a move away from him. Now the ball slips as he releases and it's up there quacking to get a shotgun to blow that away. And I thought there was going to. I thought there was a little bit of interference. It looked to me like Deion Figures pushed the receiver in the back to get better position to get the ball. Well, it's duck season in Kansas. A lot of people coming from all over the country to shoot some birds, and uh -oh. that one was almost shot, and that one's picked off. Chris Hudson picks it off, and then he fumbles the football. Colorado retains possession at the 23. They're saying that he was down by contact, down by the turf, that the turf caused the fumble, so they, they were going to rule it uh, Colorado's ball no matter what. This just 
looked like a misread, a miscommunication between quarterback and tight end. Watson's going down the middle of the field. Colorado running a little stunt. The defensive tackle's twisting in front of Watson. Uh, he throws it down the middle of the field, and, and I'll tell you, his receiver was not on the same page whatsoever. I mean, that, that's a case where you got uh, Russ Campbell, and he just not on the same page, and the ball's thrown into his zone. The Campbell's nowhere near. Well, we're going to step aside with 9.40 to go in the first quarter. A wild start between Colorado and Kansas State. No score. The Wildcats just turning the ball over, and Dave Lapham says they can't do that today. Uh, two without two of its top receivers. Rico Smith and Mark Henry are not here because of injuries. In their place, you're going to see Charles Johnson and Michael Westbrook. Both of those players have seen a lot of time this year, but Robbie James is going to be in there as well. Look out, Nooner. They're coming right after you. <laughs> We're going to have to put some pads on Brian Nooner. A nice play by Masters to force Warren out of bounds, a loss of a couple. Tremendous effort. Look at all the purple jerseys around Darian Hagan. He's drawn a crowd of four or five purple jerseys. They are not going to let Darian Hagan be the factor on the on the uh, option. They're going to make him pitch it, and it was just defense exceptionally well by C.J. Masters. That's the game plan, Dave. I think they're going to make uh, Hagan pitch the football. They're not going to let him keep him in his hands and be the factor that decides the game. Now you see what he did against Oklahoma. Big win for Colorado against the Sooners. They've won three in a row now against OU. Hagan to throw. That's incomplete. Intended for Sean Brown. Third and 18 for CU. This is uncharacteristic of the way that Darian Hagan's been throwing the football here of late. He's been exceptionally accurate. Here he rolls out and sets himself behind the tackle and just does not give an accurate enough throw. I, you know, it's a case where his big tight end Brown could not get both hands on the football to make a catch. Well, McCartney looking now at third and long again and without those receivers that Brian Nooner talked about, Mark Henry and Rico Smith. And Johnson's already dropped one in the first possession, a catchable pass. In motion goes Westbrook. The pitch back to Warren. They're going to try to run it, and he'll slip down. That'll do it. Goes down at the 15-yard line. So it's three out for CU, and listen to the crowd for the Kansas State defense. question who are these guys if it's show and tell time the wildcats are showing up so far that's right they must some of them must be from missouri to show me stay because they're showing it boy burger gets off a better punt this time to michael smith who will grab it at the 38 and getting down there was jay lewenberg the center to make the stop great effort by the captain co-captain all-american candidate he'll be the first center in colorado history to be all big eight first team back-to-back -back seasons he's a great great talent pro potential oh definitely uh you know his, his mental makeup as well as his physical abilities make him a pro candidate uh here's a guy that's a diabetic i mean he takes two insulin shots a day sometimes some games he'll take an insulin shot to control his diabetes before the game or in the locker room at halftime when I mean, you talk about a leader the players his teammates think if he does that we can play a hold against Colorado. They're going to bring this punt back and perhaps make him do it again. And the, if the hold, depending, if, if the hold have been after the right punt. pre or pre or post kick will determine if if uh, Kansas State will make him go back and kick it again, uh, or if they'll just penalize it at the end of the run here if the holding took place after the ball was in the air. Why are they talking to Colorado about this? You'd think they'd be talking to Kansas State. Unless he made a, maybe he went to the wrong way, the wrong oh. yeah, the wrong direction. But he didn't. On the offense. Yeah, he is. He's going the wrong way. <laughs> right, on the return. All right, that's why. It's declined. They like the position right where they have it, and Bill Snyder now will get his team kick started again. First and ten, the ball on the 42. Kansas State has enjoyed good field position. They have, and what a masterful job Coach Bill Snyder has done with this program. USA Today earlier this week, Dave reading it, he's a candidate for National Coach of the Year. Why not, not just conference coach. Exactly, why not? Masterful, masterful job by he and his staff. Gallon and Madden are in the backfield for Kansas State on first and ten from the 42. On a delay, here comes Watson to throw. He's got his receiver, Campbell, he's got it inside Colorado Territory at the 45. I like that call, Dave. The main reason I like it is he and Campbell were uh, disjointed on the, 
on the interception. Went right back to his tight end and said, okay, we messed up. Let's get our confidence reestablished. A little play action fake. The backfield freezes Colorado a little bit. Tight end runs a little pattern into the seam. He gets tattooed, but he holds on that football. 255 pounds in the secondary is a tough, tough thing to bring down. I was going to say, who's tattooing who? Yeah, he's, he's alone. 55 pounds. First down for Kansas State. At the Colorado 45. Colorado might have moved. Watson hangs onto the football and gains about four. Might be first and five, though, for KSU. I agree. I think uh, Colorado is definitely in the neutral zone. Marcellus Elder was the guy that jumped early for CU. Nice that first and five, isn't it? It sure is. And it was this was a heads up play by by Watson. It, once he sees it in New Year, the, the ball is snapped. Once Colorado jumps, the ball is snapped. He just runs a quarterback sneak. He knows he's got a free play anyway. Instead of taking any kind of a chance that would neutralize it or turn the ball over, uh, it couldn't have been a called quarterback sneak on first down. That was just a, a heads up play to make sure that he get that five yard penalty. And you see uh, Colorado starting to shoot themselves in the foot just a little bit on penalty situations. Madden doesn't go very far. Marcellus Elder was there to bump him right at the line. Maybe a gain of one on first down, but it's going to be second down and four. You know, it was interesting. Watson did such a magnificent job of, of faking. We got an injury, injured Colorado defensive lineman working his way off, and that's Marcellus Elder. Watch Watson after he gives the handoff. He goes through his play fake. He acts like he has the ball. Watch Chad Brown, 34 in the white. He says, oh, he's got the ball. No, he doesn't. Now, that'll help you. It helps set up your running game, and then who, does, who has the ball? Does the running back have it? That gives you play action. Does the quarterback have it? No, the running back has it. Then you're between a rock and a hard place. Elder's down. We'll get a report from Nooner in just a moment. On second and a long three for Kansas State. Gallon will have a first down at the 35, I believe. Ron Wolfork stopped him right near the first down chain. In fact, it's close enough they're going to measure. Well, Bill McCartney was a little bit worried about how his team would come into this game mentally, knowing they played Oklahoma last week in a big game against Nebraska next week. That's right. It was a sandwich of uncertainty between those two games where he knew his team was going to come out and play excellent football. Good point, Dave. You know, the flip side of that is Kansas State. I was a little worried about their emotion. The, the Kansas game was a big, big emotional rivalry. They win that game, come back and win it. They play exceptionally well and emotionally well in, in Lincoln, Nebraska. Can they do it three times in a row? This is a team testing the emotional resiliency. They've passed with a, with a very good grade so far in this football game emotionally. Now, as you saw, the first down was not there for Kansas State. Just shy. And it's going to bring up a third in inches. This may be a good down to, to, to try something. It's a throwaway down. Go for it on fourth down. A little play action fake. You may catch him napping. Well, instead, they just want the first down. And Watson should have it. Now, where they've got it marked, he's definitely got a first down. So they'll move the chains again. That's the sixth first down for Kansas State in this game. And Colorado's defense is playing exceptional football. Just ask Oklahoma. Uh, Colorado, since their loss to Stanford and, and Coach McCartney, had that, had that week off where they had intense scrimmages. They're playing exceptional football. Now you see the, the lines and how they measure up. Pretty even. I mean, you know, uh, Colorado's offense is, uh, is is good size, but the only the only word that's a little bit of a the differential size-wise is Kansas State defense matching up against Colorado's offense up front. But if they put Evan Simpson in there, that'll negate the that That's true. That's true. Watson's going to be sacked behind the line by Leonard Renfro. That might be a coverage sack on the part of the Buffaloes as Watson was scrambling back there and Renfro wrapped him up and that's his third quarterback sack of the year. That's right. He's the leading defensive lineman down lineman in terms of interior down lineman in terms of quarterback sacks and Watson you're right he had to pull the ball down nowhere to go couldn't get rid of it on rhythm. He, he was sacked Watson was sacked eight times in Nebraska. Eight, eight different times, and he was hit quite a few other times. He showed a lot of toughness, and I don't think that'll phase Paul Watson one bit that side. Second and 13. And Kansas State's doing it on the ground as well today. Straight back for Watson, a deep drop, and the screen pass to Gallon. He's got some room, and a first down for Gallon. Thomas, 
has given Gallon an opportunity to get to the outside. A little bit more pressure, and, and I'll tell you what, Gallon may have been in the end zone. Kansas State's taking advantage of the aggressiveness of this Colorado defense. Good point, Dave. Draws and screens. They've done both already. And uh, Colorado thought they were going to get a sack. Uh -uh. It was a screen pass executed New Year. Way to get downfield from that center position throw key block. First and 10, Wildcats to 17. Watson with time, almost picked off by Beaker. Pass intended for Michael Smith. Smith is going to see a lot of double coverage today. He sure is. It should open up uh, for his cohorts. That was tipped at the line of scrimmage. That ball was redirected, and those are dangerous. I mean, you you hate to see you hate to see that. It was Beaker from his linebacker position that that got the deflection on that ball, almost had an interception. And uh, Kansas State, the last time they were knocking down here in the red zone, they threw an interception from their own th uh, from Colorado's 30. Now they're in the red zone, inside the 20-yard line. Can't afford a giveaway here. Got to get points. Colorado doesn't give up many touchdowns either. It's tough to get points against the Buffaloes. They've given up only 10 touchdowns in the last seven and a half games. Here comes the pressure. Oh, Smith almost had it. Renfro is really putting the heat on Watson. That's right, Dave. Renfro prevented a touchdown. I mean, that'll go in the, in the books as a quarterback pressure is what this is called because he made Watson throw the ball sooner than he wanted to. Watson had to throw the football going backwards because Renfro's in his lap. Michael Smith's so open, but Watson had no opportunity to plant his feet, step forward, and deliver with authority. And I'll tell you what, knowing Michael Smith, he's mad at himself right now. I'm sure he thinks I should have had that. One. Oh, yeah, he's a competitor and a half. I mean, he gives it on every down. But I'll tell you, Renfro, he, he helped prevent a big play there. Third and ten. Might have been some movement. There's a flag late. And that one incomplete. Almost picked off. The guy that moved was Mike Orr, the right tackle. Uh, he, he was in a two-point stance. He didn't have his hand on the ground, but he moved. He retreated into the backfield for his pass protection well before the ball was snapped. Motion against Kansas State. We'll see what Colorado decides to do. Uh, most likely they're going to refuse this. Let's take a look at Coleman. You mentioned that Michael Smith's going to get a lot of double coverage. That should help people like Coleman. And he's, he thinks he's worked himself into the front corner of the end zone for, for a, a, a potential uh, touchdown reception here, but the penalty nullified any opportunity. Now coming on now for the field goal will be Tate Wright. He missed one last week against Nebraska that would have given Kansas State a 10-point lead and a miss that a lot of Kansas State folks think it really wasn't a miss, that he actually made it. Right. They were all celebrating. The players were celebrating on the field, and then it was called no good. This one from 35 yards out. It's up, and it is no good. Off to the right. Tate Wright misses his second straight. Not happy with himself, and Colorado escapes as Kansas State knocks on that door, but Colorado doesn't open up. Well, you mentioned, Dave, how tough Colorado is to score touchdowns against. I mean, they've, they've got a streak defensively that's going that's unbelievable. They've only given up, the first unit's only given up 10 touchdowns in 38 quarters. And now this is the second time Kansas State in scoring zone now, in the red zone, pushes a field goal wide. They were in there at uh, Colorado's 30-yard line in the first drive and threw an interception. Have to capitalize on these opportunities. They may come back to haunt you. This was definitely pushed wide right from the word go. So Tate Wright misses the field goal, so we still have no score. 5.33 left to go in the first quarter. Colorado and Kansas State are dead even at zero. You're watching Prime Network. Bob back with another bodacious Big A barn burner. The Cyclones blow in bent on bagging the Tigers. Iowa State and Missouri is one big bad Big A draw. Next weekend on Prime Network. Available on most Prime affiliates. So far, Colorado's flag is not waving very well today against this Kansas State defense that has stopped them cold. It's been pretty much three and out for C. Only one first down for the Buffaloes. So Darian Hagan will try to get him going again and see Hagan yet to complete a pass where Kansas State 57 through the air and only 15 yards on the ground for CU. Not much doing there for James Hill. Hill 
playing with a slight concussion. He says he's fine. Had a concussion. Missed the game against Oklahoma a week ago. And prior to that, to that rush right there by Colorado, 12 of the 15 yards rushing came on the first play of the game when Hill was a full, fullback dive right between the tackles. So Kansas State has done a marvelous job defensively since that first drive. Now Bill McCartney said that they needed to get a good surge on first down, and they got four that time. It's second and six. Pick out from Hagen, his first completion of the day. Pass caught by Colorado. Michael Westbrook with the reception and a first down for Colorado and a great effort after he caught the ball. That's right. Basically, a receiver is a running back after he makes the catch, and Westbrook makes a good example of it here. Just a little out pattern and just a missed tackle, not executed very well by Price at all uh, for Kansas State. And Westbrook, that's his 11th catch of the year. Four of his 11 catches now have gone for touchdowns. A big play guy. Westbrook just a freshman, too. That was Roger Green, but he broke the tackle on I'm sorry. So is he. Yeah. <laughs> Very. Good to Warren. He breaks it outside. And tripped up a great tackle. Green makes up for it. I think he got kicked. He, I think as he made the tackle, he got kicked in the solar plexus, in, right underneath the, the windpipe, and got the air knocked out of him a little bit. And I'll tell you, that can be painful. Let's take a look at it once again. It's just a little counteraction. Cuts back totally against the grain. And he, now he's trying to show his speed. Lamont Warren is around the perimeter. Roger Green, uh, yeah, Roger, he ties him up. And as he goes down right there, he gets kicked. I think that's what happened is the heel, the foot came up and, and kicked him. Just a little wind, a little wind situation. I'll tell you, that's a scary situation, Dave. I remember one time I was on the bottom of a pile of about 2,000 pounds of humanity <laughs> and had the wind knocked out. I mean, I, I was scared. I thought I'll never breathe again. Well, we're going to catch our breath as well. With 4.38 left to go in the first quarter, while Roderick Green gathers himself, so will we. We'll be back in just a moment. They'll think you slaved over a hot stove for hours. We won't tell if you won't. Pork, the other white meat. Still in the dark about the other white meat? Today's pork isn't what it used to be. Pork, the other white meat. Red 28! I've never heard anything like it. It's a video that speaks for itself. Is that a tennis match? In a language that's all its own. Call this toll-free number now and find out what everyone is talking about in this fascinating video, The Hidden NFL. It's free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated. The best way to capture all the drama of sports. This is the NFL, which stands for not for long when you make them... Hidden mics and hidden cameras let you in on the NFL secrets in this fascinating video that you'll watch again and again. Who's in charge of replay? Call now to subscribe or renew for a full year. 54 issues, including the swimsuit issue for $1.29 an issue. Save over 55% off the cover price. The free video and a year of SR. Great gifts for the sports fans on your Christmas list. For faster delivery, use your credit card. Call now for your free video and to enjoy all the excitement of sports every week with Sports Illustrated. Still no score between Colorado and Kansas State here at KSU Stadium, Wagner Field, with Brian Nooner and Dave Lapham. I'm Dave Armstrong. Welcome to our Big Eight Game of the Week on Prime Network. It's second and six for Colorado. Get your report on Roger Green. He was just shaken up on that last play, but walked over to the sideline all by himself. That pass by Hagen, incomplete to Sean Embry. Hagen upset with himself. That one. Boy, it looked like it slipped off his hand as well. Yeah, it was a little bit high. Uh, it would have been a, a great catch, but uh, at this point, Darian Hagen is, is not as accurate as he has been this part of the season. As, as I took a look uh, at Roger Green uh, when he made that tackle, it looked like he, he rolled over on his elbow. And it looked like he jammed his elbow into his into his side, which may have knocked the wind out of him. I think that's all we've got. I think we'll see him back in the football game. This guy should be a Heisman Trophy candidate with numbers like that and his leadership as well. Passes caught by Westbrook, and he's got a first down right at midfield. The market at the 50-yard line. Roderick Green back into the contest to make the stop. 
Barry and Hagen got up at the end of this play, very, uh, very upset with Brooks Barta. Let's take a look at Hagen after he delivers the football. They came on an all-out blitz. Well, I think we don't have uh, the shot at Darian Hagen, and he took a shot from Brooks Barter, thought it was late, got up and told the official, so said, hey, you got to protect me a little bit. Don't leave me open to shots from this guy, because he's, uh, he's like a wild animal with raw meat out there. <laughs> took him after it. <laughs> First down for Colorado. They seem to have found their stride on offense. Hagen rolling out. He's going to get a rock. Beautiful play defensively in there by Brent Venables, a junior out of Salina. Well, it's very apparent that Kansas State is going to is going to keep company, uh, keep Darian Hagen company on the perimeter all day long. There's three or four purple jerseys around him every time. Colorado may have to try to run the ball between the tackles a little bit once again with their fullback, and he's limping off the field. Hagen is looks like he turned his ankle, but watch all the purple jerseys here as as they as they collapse on him. Killian, I mean, there's just all kinds of people around Darian Hagen, and they've got the backup quarterback in there, Joseph. Vance Joseph in their quarterback now for Colorado. And he wants to throw on first down, a screen pass to Westbrook. He's got some room to run. He gets down to the 40, fumbles the football. Kansas State has it. I think it's Jay Lundberg that's down in the middle of the field. He's just not getting to his knees. Boy, he got, he got nailed on as he, as he threw a block. Big Evan Simpson, I'll tell you what, 5'11", 315 pounds reacted to that football. It's a little bit screen uh, to the wide receiver, Westbrook. And right there, Lundberg makes the block. And he not to get up. He made a hit on Brooks Barna that stunned him. And the ball stripped free and recovered very effectively. Chris Patterson reached in and strips it away from Westbrook. And Brent Evan, Venables, yeah. And Evan Simpson falls on that football and a first turnover for Colorado. Kansas State back on the attack at their own 38. Watson to throw. Chad Brown chasing him. Watson trying to get it to Hernandez and a good play defensively by Figures to knock it away. Hagen now looking like uh, they're going to wrap that ankle just a little bit. We'll get a report on Darian Hagen. They're cutting it off right now. That's called a spat. When you have a tape job outside of your shoe, that's called spatting your shoes. Now they're going to they, they cut that tape off. They're going to take the, the shoes and socks off. It's defensive, it's defensive holding against Colorado is the preliminary indication. Now they'll take that shoe off, take the sock off. They'll cut the tape job off underneath, retape it. At first, they'll check to see what kind of damage is done. Then they'll give them a total new retake job. Meanwhile, a holding call against Colorado. And that sets up another first down for Kansas State while they retake the ankle of Darian Hagan. Put a little more support on there. They'll give him another couple of figure eights and a heel lock to give that, that ankle more stability. And I'm sure he'll be back in the game. First down for Kansas State all the way up to the 48-yard line. Two out wide to the right, one to the left, and some movement. Perhaps on Kansas State, they'll blow it dead. Darian Hagan goes down with that injury. Vance Joseph comes in. Colorado turns it over, and Darian Hagan certainly is key to that Colorado attack. And somebody in the left side of the line moved early. Toby Lawrence, the guy that moved early. <laughs> So first and 15 for Kansas State. on the football. Watson, 5 of 10 today for 77 yards. Kansas State moving the ball again, Dave. They sure are. On the draw play, Gallon. Not much. Beekert sniffed it out after a little gain. Ron Wolfork was there as well for Colorado. 
and a gain of about three or four. Uh, this Kansas State team's trying to make a statement. I mean, people still aren't believing that, they, that they've turned the corner, more than turned the corner to respectability. Uh, and, and they want to show up this afternoon. They figure if they can put back-to-back -back performances uh, against Nebraska and Colorado, people start to think they're for real. Kansas State kind of reminds you of those guys that were following Butch Cassidy in the Sunday. Right. They kept looking back. Who are That's these guys? Right. That's right. Well, it looks like Kansas State is for real, folks. Watson feeling the pressure again and loads it to Gallon. He drops it. He didn't have much room to run. Chad Brown was coming up there as Leonard Renfro was really putting the heat on Watson. And he's been doing that with regularity. Leonard Renfro is, is a force. He's a factor for the Colorado Buffaloes up front. Bill Snyder really likes the senior leadership that Paul Watson gives him. Well, I think that we have a lot of competitive people in our program, and Paul is certainly one of them. I've, I've been very pleased with his progress. And, uh, particularly the last uh, five quarters of uh, uh, play that he has put together and it's been very accurate and a very strong leader. He's developed a great deal of toughness and uh, has done some very, very positive things for us. If he can do something positive here on third and eight. Wolfork putting the pressure on early and Chad Brown sacks Watson behind the line. They'll have a fourth down situation now at the 35. On the stop for 93, Joe Osteen. That was a good job from both defensive ends making Watson step up in the pocket. They both collapsed on him. Watson limping just a little bit. She said earlier he was sacked eight times by Nebraska last week and was hit a multitude of other times. He's, he's shown some toughness. I think that's what his teammates have responded to as much as anything is his physical toughness in the pocket. Yeah, I'm not sure. It looks like Kansas State may be going for it here yeah. on fourth down. Confidence in their defense. Fourth and nine at the 35. And now they're going to take a delay a game. I think they'll probably punt it now. They were maybe trying to draw Colorado offside. They're going to take the delay a game, a five-yard penalty to push the ball back to the 40, and maybe that's better from a punting standpoint to punt it from the Dead 40. Ball. Delay a game, offense, five yards, repeat, fourth down. And the punting unit does come out for Kansas State. And the punter, Sean Snyder, the coach's son. He, along with his dad, emigrated from the University of Iowa. And back deep for Colorado is Chris Hudson. Hudson back at his own 10-yard line. Schneider said we've got to do things well in the kicking game. Schneider hangs it up for the coffin in the corner. Let's see where they mark it. Did that go into the end zone? No, they're going to mark it out at the 7-yard line. Great part from Sean Schneider. Well, the field position battle is being won uh, outright by Kansas State at this point of the football game. Not only this drive, but Colorado has not had great field position any one of their drives, and Kansas State has enjoyed exceptional field position. Hagan back right now. It looks like he's going to come back out onto the field, and he does at quarterback. So evidently that taping job that the trainers did is sufficient for Hagan to come back on the attack for Colorado. But... The Buffaloes backed up all the way to the seven-yard line. That won't scare CU, though, Dave. They had two 99-yard drives against Oklahoma last week. That's right. That's against a heck of a defensive football team. And they give this to Warren. Nothing good. Wrapped up by Sean Dabney. Great penetration by Dabney. He caught it from behind. It's just a, just a great effort. Watch, uh, it's just a straight handoff. It's a power isolation play right up the gut. And Dabney runs around the block from behind and tracks Warren down. That's a great play by the defensive lineman separating from his block. Only two yards rushing for Lamont Warren on five carries. Warren again on the draw. This time with some room to run. Nice moves by the freshman Warren. Up to the 23-yard line and a first down. What a run. Showed a little bit of everything there. Showed a change of direction. Showed his cutting ability. Showed his speed. And what he did real well was he, he thought that Kansas State was over pursuing. And watch him cut back. Cut back against the grain. He feels that Kansas State, everybody's over pursuing the football. Nice spin move there at the end. That was a tight 360 right there. 
So a first down for Colorado up to the 23-yard line. Hill is hit. Big time by Simpson. 315 pounds at 5'11", and when you hit that wall, you're not going anywhere. Oh, no, that's it's like running into a into a stone wall in, in, in your fireplace. I mean, this guy is a load, plays off the block and just gets low. You know, football, it, it's physics, and the low man wins. And to get under Evan Simpson's shoulder pads, you've got to crawl off the line of scrimmage. I mean, his he's got 300 pounds that's all like three and a half feet off the, off the ground when he's in his football stance. That's a load and a half to try to move. A loss of one, second and 11. And a whistles before this play gets underway. Colorado is too quick for the quarter. Line. That's the end of the quarter. First quarter comes to a close, and we've got no score. We've also got an excited crowd at KSU Stadium. Each team with a turnover. Neither team with any points. We're tied at the end of one at zero. new weight room here at KSU. You've spent a lot of time there, haven't you? Uh, not, yeah. Not it, in this one, but this, I mean in a weight room. In a weight room for sure, and I'll tell you somebody that has is Evan Simpson. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's been in that weight room throwing some of that iron around. So is Darian Hagan as he tried to get that knee rehabilitated after last year's Orange Bowl. Brian Nooner has an update on number three. Dave, actually, it's his ankle that was injured. He twisted his left ankle. They rewrapped re it. Also, he scrapped his low-top shoes. He's going with high tops now for added support. A little bit of the mist that fell last night here it causes the slippery turf. So the high tops now on Hagen. And on second down, they pick up about four up to the 26-yard line. That's the first time that Kansas State has held the Colorado scoreless since 1984 in that first quarter. And Dave, that's the last time Kansas State beats the U. And Kansas State's doing so many things for the first time this year. Watson last week against Nebraska, that was the first Kansas State quarterback ever all time to throw for 300 yards. They're, they're setting all kinds of firsts this year. This program is on the way, folks. And you see what uh, Kansas State did in that first quarter. They dominated. Well, not dominated, but at least they had the advantage. Hagan to throw on third down. Westbrook is wide open. He fights his way up to the 44-yard line, then game tackled there. C.J. Masters was the first to hit him, and then he got a lot of help. There was confusion uh, defensively prior to the snap. Uh, the defensive linemen weren't sure where to line up, and, and the, so there obviously was confusion in the linebacker level also, and, and he's, Westbrook's just wide open. I mean, the closest guy that's trying to react over is Mendez from the inside out, and he's just reacting. That, no way that's his coverage, but there was a, a brain lock out there. Somebody just let him op open in, in a vacant zone all along. Westbrook's been a load so far today. Look what he's done. He's a talent. He's being compared to Pritchard, which is a heck of a compliment. I should say. First down. Uh, I would say there's some movement <laughs> there. <laughs> Boy, Jason Perkins, he jumped into the front row. I guess if you're going to do it, you might as well get your money's worth, and he got his money's worth. <laughs> yeah. Dead ball. Illegal procedure. Offense. Five yards. Repeat. Stuff on TV, big time. <laughs> That's right. The only thing he, he probably should have just gotten a hit, you know, one of those free shots where <laughs> you, no one else is moving. You come off and just unload an ear hole somebody, but uh, that'll do nothing but aggravate the defense there. Another, another big penalty for Darian Hagan to work with. That's first and 15 now for Colorado. Hagan hangs on and picks up that five that they just lost. Bill McCartney really likes the leadership that uh, Darian Hagan gives him uh, as his uh, senior. And I tell you, another guy that has a lot of respect for him, too, is Bill Snyder. Uh, certainly is a tremendous threat on the option. He does some tremendous things, whether the ball's in his hand or he's, or he's uh, pushing it outside. Uh, he's throwing the ball so well right now. I'm really uh, impressed with the accuracy and, his, uh, and the velocity that he has on the ball. And he's just on target. Uh, it throws with the accomplishment of quarterbacks who play in very strong pass or any uh, program. Well, you saw him throw there off the back foot to Westbrook, and William Price was right there. Hagan's not happy about something. And right now he's kind of yelling at this coaching. We've got a ball game between Colorado and Kansas State at 
the half. It's seven nothing in favor of the Buffaloes. With Dave Lapham, I'm Dave Armstrong. An interesting first half for Kansas State. The Wildcats moved the ball effectively on offense. They sure did, Dave, particularly between the 20s. I mean, they were very effective, but stalled when they got in the red zone around the 20 yard line in. Colorado then bowled their backs and became a lot tougher defense. Eric Gallen was a big guy offensively for Kansas State early on as he really ran well when Colorado came on the blitz. Right, and, and this is nothing fancy here. All they're doing is it's, it's a straight dive to Gallen, and, uh, and then his, his abilities just take over. He breaks it back to the outside and tries to outrun some people, and if Hamilton doesn't make a play and drag him down from behind, that could have been big touchdown all the way. Then you watch Watson as he goes to Curtis Madden, and a big first down here for Kansas State. And watch the forearm shot that he gives to Hamilton. I mean, that's a right forearm shiver that'll rattle your uh, teeth a little bit, and he showed some good power there. Then here's the touchdown, the only touchdown of the first half, Lamont Warren from seven. And what he does is he makes a great uh, read. He's got tremendous field vision, and he just cuts it back, and he, he takes it to the corner of the end zone ahead of Price. Now, here's a case where Watson does not see Beekert whatsoever in his zone. As he's dropping into his zone, Watson's going for the slant pattern. All of a sudden, there's the linebacker to make the interception. Let's look statistically at how things are in this first half. And if you only looked at this, you would think Kansas State had the lead. Other than uh, as we get down second to the bottom, turnovers. That's mm -hmm. the story of the game so far. Colorado's got the one giveaway. Kansas State's got three. And, and one of them led to the touchdown for Colorado, giving the football up at their own 13-yard line. Take us into both locker rooms. Who's happy, who's not? Well, uh, it, that's that's interesting. I mean, I think I think both coaches are, are probably happy. Uh, Coach McCartney's happy that he's got the lead, but I think he's chastising his players a little bit. He said, okay, we talked all week. Let's not underestimate this Kansas State team, but I think you guys maybe did a little bit physically. You're going to have to go out and saw wood in the second half, the entire half. I think Coach Snyder, on the other hand, is saying, don't give the football up anymore. We're in this football game. Well, Colorado didn't believe before. They're believers now as they lead Kansas State, but by only seven at the half. Welcome back to KSU Stadium. Colorado leading Kansas State. We get set to start the second half. Colorado leading 7 to nothing. Let's go down on the field to Brian Nooner. What's the mood down there on KSU Stadium? Well, I'll tell you what, uh, the, on the Kansas State side, they're very happy. Colorado is all business. Those guys can't be pleased at all. And just before the half ended, uh, Bill McCartney was talking with one of the officials. He's not happy. He feels that his defensive line is being held by the Kansas State offensive line. And if you remember, ironically, it was a Colorado holding penalty that uh, kept the Buffaloes out of field goal range right before the half. Mm. Thanks, Brian. Second half about to start. Bill McCartney is uh, always looking for that edge. Not happy. He's got to, you know, he's got to be upset with uh, his team's offense only getting seven points, and that was really a gift as Colorado got the ball on the 13-yard line after that turnover. Well, as Brian overheard, coaches at all sports uh, work the officials. I mean, basketball coaches do it all the time from the bench, and football coaches, uh, it's no exception. You have to do it in a tactical manner, though, where you don't uh, upset the officials and it backfires on you, but I think Coach Mack is probably as diplomatic as anybody, yet still gets his point across. That's William Price. He and Andre Coleman are back deep for Kansas State, and that's Mitch Berger. Berger will kick off for Colorado. In the third quarter about to start. It'll be interesting to see if we see an early holding call against Kansas State and to see if Coach Mack was hurt by the officials. Ball comes to Coleman at the goal line. Tripped up at the 17, falls forward to the 18. And Colorado comes on defense. Greg Lindsay, the first one to get downfield and stop Andre Coleman. Paul Watson in his first half was 11 of 21. That's the good news. The bad news there, that far right number, those two interceptions. Right. And also rushed the ball six times for 20 yards, had one fumble. Eric Gallen back in in the backfield for Kansas State. And also out there offensively for the Wildcats is Michael Smith, who was a bit shaken up in the first half. So Michael is okay at the halftime festivities come to a close, and the third quarter begins. Gallon on the draw. Won't get much. A couple of yards on first down. Marcellus Elder was the first one to hit him from Colorado. Now that time Colorado made a, made a good adjustment. Instead of just boring it upfield, uh, flying upfield, pass rushing out of control, they were in, in a more controlled rush, and they played off their blocks very effectively to stop that draw play. 
Kansas State coming off a game against Nebraska in which they scored 31 points. That's the most points they've ever scored against the Cornhuskers, and that's what Gallon did in that first half, the leading rusher in this game and the third leading rusher in the Big 8 Conference this year. Over 80 yards a game he's run for. Yeah, he started off big against Indiana State with 184 yards on the ground. Watson gets rid of it, almost picked off after it went through Gallon's hands. And then almost picked off Renfro as the guy hanging on to Watson in the backfield. And then it was Ronnie Bradford who had it go through his hands. I, uh, good effort by Watson here not to be sacked. I mean, he's got a 275-pounder in the form of Renfro draped all over his legs. Renfro can't bring him down. Good arm strength shown by Watson. Throws the ball high. Boy, that's one that's going to be nightmare city for Ronnie Bradford. He saw a golden goalpost, but he just didn't catch the football. Third and eight. wants to run looking for a block close to the 30 that's not a fumble that ball came loose as he dove forward and it's going to be right close to that first down marker at the 29 yard line remember they had the initial possession at the 19. it all depends on the spot dave you're right it's where they put that ball down and once again this isn't a call quarterback draw he's got nowhere to go with the ball he finds a seam and he says i'm taking some of his blockers reaching out for the last possible yardage he could as Beekert made the hit on him. And he got the first down. Yeah, that ground can't cause the fumble and the first down completed by Watson. Watson saw a hole, a seam in that Colorado defense and took advantage of it. And the give to Gallon. Sidesteps at the line and a nice move to the left as he picks up about six yards on first down before Beaker could stop him. Great. I think there was a good block uh, uh, executed there by, by Toby Lawrence on uh, Joel Steed. Watch number 75 working on 93 in the white. Stays with him and takes him down to the ground giving Gallon an opportunity to cut back. I mean, it, basically Joel Steed had him out position, but Lawrence stayed with the block, finished the block, got Steed in the ground and let's face it, it's tough to tackle anybody when you're on the turf. You can't reach up and if, if, if a back goes down with a finger tackle or an arm tackle, he's no good back. Gallon goes out on second and four. The pitch to Curtis Madden. Madden showing some strong running and a late hit in there. No flags come in. Up to the 43-yard line. Another first down to move the chains again. Play gets started pretty well. Watch the watch uh, number 75 pull again. Boom, he makes the cut block. Already on the turf is number 97 uh, Elder, which, which got the corner well enough to execute the first down. The offensive line up front for Kansas State doing a fine job of executing their blocking techniques. On the eye formation now for Kansas State. You see what Kansas State has done. 16 first downs already today, but no score yet for the Wildcats. Billy Sam. A senior, a seldom used player in there spelling Eric Gallon. There's also another injury for Kansas State's kid Rawlings, who normally backs up Gallon. So that backfield for Kansas State feeling the effects of playing Nebraska and Colorado back-to-back -back weeks. Renfro involved in that defensive play, and he has played a fine football game. Uh, he's pressured the quarterback with regularity. He's played the run and the pass equally effectively. He's done a great job for Colorado. Sam, number six out of Euless, Texas, a lone back now for Kansas State. On second and nine. Watson given time, and now here comes the pressure from Brown, and Watson unloads it. It might be a hold call against Kansas State. He must have called it against Orr as he was working hard to protect Watson. Peeled back from behind to try to try to help out. Good pressure once again by Colorado. They ran a little line stunt up front. They twisted the defensive tackles. They crisscrossed in their pass trying to confuse the Kansas State offensive line. They got decent pressure on Watson. Now the hold call against Kansas State could back them up if Colorado chooses to accept it, and I'm sure they will. Thomas trying to get, he's getting the approval from Coach Mack. Where do you want to go? Do you want to go third and 10 or take the penalty and make it second and 20? Second and 19, they took the penalty, second and 19. Holding 10 yards on the offense, repeat second down. Second 
and a quarter mile now for Kansas State. Yeah, because the pe the, the uh, penalty is walked off from the infraction point, right. which was about 10 yards uh, in the backfield with Watson as Orr peeled back to try to help out. So this is a country mile. you got to take that one. That's a 22-yard penalty against Kansas State, and it's second and 31 all the way back to the 23-yard line. On the draw play, here comes Sam. Trying to break outside, he does. And carries it up to the 32-yard line, and a flag comes in. That should be another face mask. I'll tell you, every time we've seen a lot of defensive backs, particularly tackling high, and you're vulnerable to, gra when you grab up around the shoulders, you're vulnerable to grabbing that equipment. In that face mask. face mask, five yards. The, the best way to solve that is to tackle them at the waist and the legs where they bend. Let's watch New Year operate here. He knows it's a draw so he can go downfield. He makes a little block on Beaker. Beaker now pursuing, trying to run to the sideline. Here's the grab of the face mask right there. Flagrant, and uh, it was a no doubter there. Hayward uh, grabbed on and, and rode him to the ground like a Bronco bull. Well, they replay second down again. That's the big advantage for Kansas State on that play. They tack on the five yards, give them second down again, and now it's second and 15. It's like a ping pong match with these mistakes. Back and forth they go. Two out wide to the right. One wide to the left for Kansas State on second and a long 15. You know, it was interesting, though, right away. Kansas State did, did get the call for holding in the offensive line. Play clock was down to two, and then they whistled it dead. Now, the play clock was at two when the ball was snapped, because I was watching it. And then they whistled it dead, and they're going to call a delay again. False start no, on false the start. offense, five yards. It was a false start instead. Probably one of the offensive linemen realized they were getting close to that, that play clock expiring, too, so he got a little bit antsy, and, and uh, I think it was Lawrence once again working from that left guard position who moves a little bit quickly. I don't know. That, uh, I didn't see much. No, it must have been out a little further at the left tackle position because I didn't think he moved too uh, very early either. So the teeter-totter swings the other way and it's second and 21. Really? Watson's going to be nailed. Chad Brown gets his sixth and a half sack of the season. Now Watson did a good job just holding on to that football. Watch number 34 in the white jersey at the top of your screen. Watson uh, back to pass sets himself. Here comes 34 from the blind side. He did a good job of just holding on to that football because unless he has eyes in the back of his head, he can't see him coming. He probably heard those feet thundering on the turf, though. And they get all the sacks by Colorado. What do you do if you're Kansas State to try to slow these guys down? Well, the screens that they've run and the draws that they've run that have been fairly successful, they're going to have to mix those in a little bit more, but not with this down and distance scenario. They're just paying their ears back. Third and 29 here. And they are going to run a little screen, and it's incomplete to Sam. Chad Brown again was putting a lot of pressure on in there. Well, Chad Brown not only has six and a half sacks on the season, he has eight quarterback pressures coming into this game, and his cohort, Wolfork, has ten quarterback pressures. So those two outside pass rushes have been very effective for Colorado this season. And back deep to get it for Colorado, Chris Hudson, waiting the punt of Sean Snyder. Off the side of Snyder's foot. Hudson has it at his own 43. And then is hit down at the 41. At the 38, excuse me, not the 43 is where he first got it. So a return of about five yards, and Darian Hagan comes back out. His first half number, 6 of 15 for 62 yards, and then on the ground for Hagan. Four rushes for 15 yards as Kansas State really keyed in on number three in that first half. Quickly ever, he came into the game completing 58.5% of his passes, well under 50% in the first half. Colorado's tough to come from behind on, aren't they, with that halftime stat? Hagan wants to run on first down, and he does. Hagan goes out of bounds inside Kansas State territory at the 38-yard line. 
Well, this is a, a, a good little move. Watch how he reverses out, and he just freezes the Kansas State defense just a little bit. And all those purple jerseys, they're arriving a little bit too late. Darian Hagan, a little bit too much foot speed, finds the seam and outruns everybody until uh, Roger Green uses the sideline as the 12th defender and forces him out of bounds. Hagan now with 33 yards on the ground. He up that total in a hurry with that one run. And now Hagen wants to improve his passing. He's going for it all to Westbrook in the end zone, incomplete. Boy, the official got nailed in the end zone. He got, he got run over down there by J.D. Mendez in the middle of the end zone there, talking it over now. <laughs> Good collision. <laughs> But here, here he's going to Westbrook, Darian Hagan, a little play-action fake, trying to freeze the linebackers a little bit, and he just airs it out. And that's the thing about Hagan. He's not throwing these little 10-yard shots that you think out of an option quarterback. He's getting the ball 30, 40, 50 yards downfield, just overthrows Westbrook as big play man. Good coverage by Roderick Green for Kansas State. Second and 10. Hagan again, pulled down from behind. Chris Patterson, a good defensive play for the Wildcats. And it's third and long. Just a case, once again, a lot of attention being paid to, uh, to number three. A high compliment. Uh, you know, Kansas State, last time we saw them play Kansas State, they said, Tony Sam's not going to beat us. Today they're trying to say defensively, Darian Hagan, some of your teammates are going to have to pick up the slack. It's not going to be you. Third and nine. Here comes the blitz. Hagan reads it. Gets it to Westbrook. Westbrook covered by Price. Stopped at the 15. They'll mark it at the 16-yard line. Reception number Westbrook. Well, once again, you, you see C.J. Masters trying to trying to yank at the ball at the end, but Hagen buys some time, evades the blitz. Now you got man-to-man -man coverage, and he just works right in front of Price, does Westbrook. Now watch this horse, this bull. I mean, he's not going to go down. Masters comes in. Now he's going to start to rip at the ball like he did last week successfully against Nebraska, but Westbrook would have no part of it. Big play on third down for Colorado, and Westbrook may be the next Mike Pritchard. Hagan knocked out of bounds. Maybe one. That's about it. At the 15-yard line, Hagan goes out. Evan Simpson moving that 315-pound frame side to side. Well, a little lateral quickness by the big fellow. Look at him shuffle these feet. I mean, this guy's like a dancing bear. Look at him. He's up on his toes. He's, he's running Hagan down from behind, getting involved in the thing. And he said, hey, if I'm going to run this far to get the quarterback, I'm going to get a hit on you, buddy. That's good quickness. 5'11", 315 outside. That's impressive. Gain of one, second and nine. Warren trying to pick a hole on the right side and then stood up at the 11. Mendez was right there to meet him. Well, Jamie Mendez is a guy that's played every position in the secondary. Strong safety, free safety, both corners, nickel back in his freshman year when he was defensive newcomer of the year. Now they have him at free safety, which is a great place to put him because he knows everybody's responsibility. And he makes all the calls in the secondary out of that free safety spot. Big down here. Third is his... Kansas State's defense asking the crowd for help with an oil. Third and five. Hagan still has it. He won't get the first down. Chris Patterson stops him at the seven. It's going to be about a yard and a half shy of that first down marker. Now decision time for Coach Mack. Do you put the points on the board, or do you try to open it, open it up here uh, with, with a touchdown? They're going to go for it. Big play here. Fourth and one. Coach Mack's rolling the dice in Manhattan. in the neutral zone, and then ultimately Carl Dead ball, offside. procedure on the offense. 
pretty good poise by Kansas State not to jump when Westbrook came in motion. Do you think Colorado was really going for it or were they just trying to draw Kansas yards. State offside? No, they were going for it or else the offensive lineman wouldn't have moved. I mean, they, they wouldn't have jumped on any snap count unless they were going for, for a design play. So Harper on to kick a field goal. This one lined up at the 19, a 29-yard attempt for Harper, who is four of seven this year. It is good. So Harper converts on the three, but Kansas State's defense holds down there on that fourth and one, and the penalty pays off. to the campus of Kansas State University. Colorado now leading 10-0 early on in the third quarter. That crowd really got loud for Kansas State's defense on that last dance. Brian Nooner, how loud was it down there? Getting very loud, but despite the close game on the whole, this Kansas State crowd is surprisingly quiet. Now, one of the reasons for that is probably because the officials told the Kansas State band to quit playing when Colorado had the ball because Darian Hagan couldn't hear. And that is a rule, according to the NCAA, the bands cannot play while the action is ongoing. Mitch Berger to kick off and waiting for it back there, Andre Coleman and William Price. And a pooch kick that bounces. And if it bounces out of bounds, Kansas State will again get it at the 35. That's the second time today, and you can see the disgust on Mitch Berger the second time today he kicks it out of bounds. Scoring drive for Colorado, eight plays, 46 yards. Harper with a 29-yard field goal. It took just uh, under three minutes, and Colorado stopped shy of the end zone. And that fourth and one, the offside penalty or the illegal procedure penalty on, on Colorado that really stopped that drive. It did. They, they self-destructed on, on that play. And you know, it's Kansas State's defense rises to the occasion once again, Dave. Colorado averaging over 35 points a game, 11th best in the nation, putting points up on the board. So far, they only have 10 against this Kansas State defense. Watson rolling out, trying to buy time. Brown again shadowing him. And then he is hit out of bounds by Leonard Renfro at the 29-yard line, a loss of six on first down. And that's another sack. That's, that's uh, uh, treated as another quarterback sack because Watson was trying to throw the football, and I believe that's either the seventh or eighth today. There were eight last week against Nebraska. They're going to have to do a little bit better job of firming the pocket up for Watson. Does Kansas State maybe need to shorten their routes a little bit? Yeah, they're getting beaten pretty early. The guy that's putting all the initial pressure, Renfro, is really getting a good burst off the ball. I mean, he's, it's just a physical scenario now. A pitch out to Gallon. Hurtling his own guys at the 25. Wolfork and Hamilton keep him down at the 27-yard line. A couple of more yards backwards go the Wildcats. It seems like it seems like the Colorado coaching staff really, really had a discussion with the defensive side of the football at halftime about being physical. I don't think they felt that they were physical enough, uh, as we documented Kansas State, very effective between the 20s. And they said, hey, that's enough of that. They have 205 yards here at the half. Let's play defense like we did last week against Oklahoma. Get after it a little bit. <laughs> that's something. You shut out your opponent for the half, and then the coaches get on you. Three wide to the right. Watson straight back. Here comes Renfro again. Steed also giving chase. And Watson running for his life to the Kansas State sideline. Chad Brown forcing him out. You know, they're, they're changing things up in their pass rush days. Sometimes they're just rushing straight up field in their lanes. Watch the twisting and stunting going on inside here. Look, we've got defensive linemen looping and twisting around each other, and the inside of the pocket collapses on Watson. He's got nowhere to go with the football. So Sean Snyder on to punt again. And back deep to get it is Chris Hudson. A low snap. Snyder handles it and booms it. Whoa. Did he ever? Jeez. Hudson bobbles it at the 10. On his feet to the 23. What a boomer kick by Sean Snyder. Boy, he really got all of that one. 
Snyder will go over and get the congratulations on the sidelines. Kansas State's defense comes back out. Colorado leads 10 nothing. Welcome back to Manhattan. That's uh, Sean Snyder, the coach's son, Bill Snyder, who told us yesterday the kicking game was so important in this contest. So his son said, all right, Dad, no problem. I'll just boom this one 64 yards. Look at the short hop. He made a nice play fielding the ball, first of all. Looked like a shortstop and then drills the thing 64 yards way over the head. Boy, big punt, big leg. Hudson got it back to the 24-yard line. Hagen rolling out to the right. Being chased by a Quincy Griffith, and C.J. Masters couldn't catch up with it. This half, Colorado is turning it on a little bit. Kansas State's going backwards. Well, that Colorado defensive intensity is really heightened, and uh, Dave, you make mention of the fact the coaches, well, you shut a team out, and the coaches are still dissatisfied. I think they realize Kansas State uh, stopped themselves, and Colorado didn't really stop them as well as they could have. A little Wildcat trying to get this crowd to go for a ride right now. Hagen, looking for time, finds Westbrook. William Price, Westbrook spinning ahead to the 38-yard line. Boy, Sean Dabney was in on Hagen point blank, and Hagen makes an athletic play just getting rid of the football. We got an injured uh, Kansas State player working his way off the field. Well, let's take a look at this right now. Watch this. Dabney's got him wrapped up. He delivers the ball on time with Westbrook. Just a great. Everybody was pressuring the quarterback. Westbrook made about three or four moves. He does have the type of activity that uh, that Pritchard does. Well, look at this. A clear-cut shot at him. Hagen throwing the ball as he's jumping backwards, and he delivers it accurately. Boy, Dabney really put the stick on Hagen after he released it. The injured player is Brent Venables. Lamont Warren, a couple of yards to the 40. That's it. And a flag comes in late. Perhaps another face mask? Tell you what, they're going to have to start hitting people, put the head across the bow. By that I mean put An inverted face mask, five yards, on the end of the run, repeat, first down. How many is that today, eh? Oh, it's got to be, it's got to be a half a dozen, easily, as Boone comes in to finish the playoff. He's the one, Brooks Barter is the one that had his hand up around the face mask, and, and that's a key. you got to get your hands down. I mean, don't be grabbing up around the shoulder pads and the head area because you're vulnerable to that exact thing. Hit them, put, put your helmet across the football. That way you cause fumbles. You might hit the ball with your helmet, and you make a surer tackle. So a two-yard game is improved to a seven-yard game. And it's first down all over again. Oh, oh. picked off. Elijah Alexander went out into coverage and almost had that one picked off. He had nothing in front of him except green KSU Stadium. Boy, he, he jumps out in front of Johnson, the intended receiver, and it looked like he was the primary receiver. That hit him in a bad place, right in the muckers. But as you can see, a defensive lineman's got gloves on. He's got pads on his hands. It's not an easy catch for him. He doesn't really have a good feel for the ball with all that, all that apparatus on his hands. If he was barehanded, he might have a better shot of catching that football. Alexander was staring down Wagner Field looking at that end zone. Second and short. Hagen on the roll. Hagen dances out of trouble. Gets across midfield to the Kansas State 42. Oh, he's got some moves. He does. It, it was amazing. He just pulled away from Tony Williams. I mean, he made a cut on a dime like a Volkswagen. And watch number 74 in the purple jersey. Looks more like an 18-wheeler trying to make the same cut. He's chasing him down from behind. Right there is where he just runs away from from uh, Tony Williams, and he just turns it on with about three or four moves. I'll tell you, he made eight moves in about a 10-yard area that was extraordinary. The Cardinals said he's back in the Heisman race. I'm not sure why he was ever out of it. Hill, the fullback, on first down, picks up about five or six, and that line of Colorado is starting to get some holes for the Buffalo. Starting to starting to take it, uh, take the uh, take the game, control the game up front on both sides of the football. You're right, David. I get the only thing I can think of with respect to your comment about Darian Hagan is they were unsure about his possibility of playing this year after that ruptured tendon in his knee uh, down there in the Orange Bowl. But boy, he's back 100%. And he's putting numbers up. Second and five. Warren 
He's got a hole on the right side, and Warren picks up about another eight or nine yards, another first down to the 27-yard line. Let's take a look at number 44 in the purple jersey, Brooks Barta. He gets trapped in the offensive lineman, just gets enough for Brooks Barta to get Warren started, and then all, and then right there, making people miss. I mean, that's something that's instinctive. You can you can work on a little bit, help coach it, but boy, that's something you're born with. And, and Brooks just got an, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Roger Ivey just got enough of Brooks Barter to get him started. First and 10, Colorado at the 27 of Kansas State. Warren again. Warren still on his feet. Nine yards on first down. Brooks Barta finally brought him down, but all of a sudden Colorado is getting big yardage on the ground. And one of the keys that Coach Snyder had at the top of the broadcast, Dave, was uh, being competitive on the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball and being able to take this game into the fourth quarter. While well, there's still three and a half minutes to go in the third quarter, and Colorado is starting to take some physical dominance on both sides of the line of scrimmage up front. And Colorado really getting their wake-up call in the locker room at halftime, and Warren nearing 100 yards now. Second and only one. Warren again, that's a first down. Williams wraps him up at the 15. Number 12, Warren on the stop. Once again, that didn't look real pretty, Dave, but the surge was there to the point where Warren didn't have to make his first cut until he was two yards upfield. Watch the push of the offensive line. Look at Lewenberg and Ivy double team, and Lewenberg come off to the next level. Warren doesn't make his cut until he's already gained the first down when he makes his first cut. So Colorado's offensive line reestablished the line of scrimmage three yards downfield. Clock under three minutes in the third quarter. Warren stopped by Williams after little game. Maybe a yard, and Williams comes out. It looks like he got the wind knocked out of him a little bit as he works his way to the sideline and takes a knee at the bench. This is where Kansas State, though, is so improved as Warren looks things over. I mean, they're running defensive linemen in and out. Here we get a look at Tony Williams on the sideline. He's obscured a little bit by his teammates, but he's down on the knee there trying to get some wind back. A junior, a prop 48, didn't get to play his freshman year, dyslexic, and they finally figured that out, and it's a much better student. And boy, a big play for the guy that replaced Williams, a Quincy Griffin. Great penetration, and that's the difference in this football team is the depth. I mean, Kansas State has done a good job of rotating their defensive linemen in and out by series to keep them fresh for this point of the football game, end of the third and beginning of the fourth quarter. And boy, he got great penetration that time, and Patterson got involved also. But Darian Hagan, once again, hmm, they're not going to put one man on him. Somebody takes his inside half, somebody takes his outside half. Big third down play here for both teams. Third and 15, the ball back at the 20. That's what Colorado has done on third down today. And here comes the blitz. Hill. Hill only gets to the 16-yard line. Well shy of the first down. And the field goal unit will come out again for the Buffaloes. And once again, Kansas State gets salty uh, inside the red zone, inside that scoring zone, the 20-yard line, and limiting Colorado what it will apparently be here, a field goal attempt. Teams aren't punching that ball in the end zone today at all. They're going to mark it at the 23, a 33-yard attempt from right in the center of the field.
Second and nine for the Wildcats. Clock winding down, ending the third quarter, under 20 seconds to go. Watson rolling out to his right, again feeling some pressure. And again, no, he doesn't go down. Watson stays on his feet and goes out of bounds at the 32-yard line. He ran right under the arms of Brian Diet. I mean, just ran, ran right underneath his arms to escape that. I thought he was Sac City for sure. Watson starting to hobble just a little bit. Let's watch uh, again as Kansas State blocks this field goal attempt. Great leap by Green, and the key to that was the defensive lineman got penetration, Dave, allowing Roger Green to get as close as he could to the line of scrimmage before going airborne. Just like on the goal line stand, the defensive lineman get the penetration. The linebackers come over the top to neutralize running backs. That time the defensive lineman get penetration, allowing Roger Green to get good, good penetration before he jumped vertically. This should be the last play of the third quarter. All the receivers out wide to the left. Watson looks like he might want to run for it. Now he's going to toss it up. Oh, incomplete. It was Benton. Just dropped it. Gerald Benton had it. I'm not sure if he was inbounds anyway. The end of the third quarter. This crowd a little subdued here at KSU Stadium as the third quarter comes to a close. Colorado can only manage a field goal. So at the end of three, it's the Colorado Buffaloes leading the Kansas State Wildcats 10 to nothing. Welcome back to Kansas State University in the Little Apple, Manhattan. Today, a gorgeous day. Light overcast skies. Sun dancing now over this crowd at KSU Stadium. Colorado leading Kansas State 10 to nothing. But remember, the Wildcats came up with those two fourth quarter touchdowns to come from behind to beat KU a couple of weeks ago. Boy, that tells a story in the third quarter, doesn't it? It's awful tough to score points when you got minus 21 total yards because of sacks. And it's fourth down now for Kansas State as Watson's getting a talking to by Bill Snyder. And right now, Watson's saying, I need some time, Coach. Right, Coach Coach uh, Snyder's telling about some option routes, it looks like, you know, who to look for on various reads and options. But you're right. I mean, the key to it is he has to have time to do that. Snyder the last time, boom, that 64-yarder. We'll see what he does this time. And again, Hudson is back deep for Colorado. And Hudson will be staring right up into the sun. We were on this field yesterday, and that sun can be tough as you look up into it. Here comes the rock. Snyder goes down. There's a late flag. Flag came in late. Snyder went down. The kick goes out of bounds at the Colorado 39. The official indicated with his hand it looked like running into the punter and then after he indicated it dropped his flag got running into the right. kicker five yards instead of roughing the kicker it's running into the kicker what the official wanted to make sure was that uh, nobody from kansas state blocked him into the punter and that's the difference let's see if we can see it yeah it just uh, it was a guy as he was trying to make the block up the middle he's on the ground crawling and, and ran into the kicker that's a good call it wasn't as a result of a block but it's not roughing either. It's, it's the proper call to be running into and not roughing the kicker. So this five yards does not give them the first down. Now well, McCartney's got to make a decision again. All right, do our special teams, do we go after him again, or what do we do here? These are all the decisions the head coaches have to make. What do we do on coverage? What do we do on this? Right. What do we do on third down? And see this five-yard penalty, once again, is not an automatic first down. They're still short on fourth down. So it's running into the kicker. The, ru the rough in the kicker would be an automatic first down. Absolutely. And it'd be a 15-yard penalty as opposed to a five. Just like a flagrant face mask as opposed to an inadvertent face mask. Well, now, though, it's fourth and about one. If this were different field position, Dave, I'd look for something other than a punt, but, uh, boy, you can't roll the dice in this one. Great call and well executed. A direct snap to the personal protector, the young back, and of course. 
that's the big fullback. And now he's in the open field, and he's hammering, boy. And there goes that forearm once again. Curtis Madden said, oh, my gosh, I might go. And look at, look at Snyder execute that it was a bad snap. The putter was putting on an act like, oh, the snap, it was on the ground, it's by me. That's a great execution by everybody. Chris Hudson, who was back waiting the putt, the only guy back there to stop Madden. But Kansas State keeps the drive alive. Now inside Colorado territory at the 38-yard line. Will it be another fourth quarter come from behind victory for Kansas State? Wide open and sent. He leaves a couple of tacklers. says he has it. Sam was hit hard as he made one move back to the middle. Let's see what this penalty is, but I want to tell you that Michael Smith made an unbelievable block to, to let that journey continue. I'll tell you, he's an All-American for a lot of reasons, and the block that he threw is one of them. continue to play a little delay to Warren and he just now he's starting to make his his presence felt physically nice spin move away from Mendez he can't his arm tackle by price won't take him down now he's starting to show his athletic ability right here Kansas State's continuing to play because finally the whistle's blowing big gain for Warren on first down all the way up to the 48 yard line Hagan batted away Incomplete. Third pass attempt from Hagen that's been batted down at the line today. And you know, Hagen, the, the problem, or I guess one of the reasons that it's being batted down is he's 5'10. He's not a 6'4, six, 6'5 six inch quarterback that throws the ball over the top and can see over those big defensive linemen very easily. He tries to throw in, into scenes of a pass rush. Second and 10. At the 48 of Colorado. Buffs lead 10 0 in the fourth quarter. Warren falls forward across okay, midfield to the 48 of Kansas State. From the tackle number 93, Harvard. Boy, have, have uh, turnovers been a factor today? Man, four giveaways have absolutely crushed. Every time that Kansas State generates some momentum, they shoot themselves in the foot with turnovers. Three of the turnovers in the red zone of Colorado. The other turnover when Kansas State had it at their own 13. Lamont Warren's now, now going over 100 yards rushing on the day, Dave. 110 was his previous high. That came against the Missouri Tigers. Third and 10. Hagan, the throw to the outlet. It's going to be a first down. And coming up quickly on the coverage was Roderick Green, but Johnson has the first down. Roderick Green was closing on this football. It seemed to hang up in the air for quite a while. Darian Hagan, uh, this is this pass is it's only a 10-yard pattern, but the ball's in the air for about 30 yards. And Green just can't there can't get there quick enough to break it up. Charles E. Johnson. He took the E off the jersey now because. Charles S. Johnson, the quarterback, decided not to come back this year. Hagan on a little mix-up, decides to keep it and runs right into Tony Williams. That was a play that Darian Hagan did before. Does this on his own, running away from the option, thinking that Kansas State is going to over-pursue it where Lamar Warren was headed. But, hey, Williams had no part of it. He said, I'll just bear hug you to the ground. He looked like a big old grizzly bear hugging mm -hmm. Darian Hagan. I should say. 
second and ten. This crowd's getting into it now here at KFC Stadium. Warren again. That's a gain of about four. That should give him his best total ever in a Colorado uniform. On the stop, number 89, Alexander. Alexander stops him, but it's going to be third and long again for the Buffs. And this is where Kansas State wanted to get the football game into the fourth quarter, still within striking distance. And they are, but they cannot self-destruct anymore. This has been a clear-cut case of self-destruction with the giveaways. They've been very sticky between the tackles with the running game most of the day. They have to think turnover now themselves. Defensively, they have to think takeaway. Tackle the football a little bit. Third and seven. On the option. No way! Evan Simpson with pursuit again. The big fella. I'll tell you, the, the human refrigerator. Hey, I, yeah, what does that feel like if you're Hagen? <laughs> oh, man, it feels like a mountain fell on your back. I'll tell you, and Evan Simpson is now, he's hucking and bucking from behind, and he falls over the back of Hagen, and that is a load and a half. When 315 pounds falls on your back, you feel it. Michael Smith back to return punts. And Mitch Berger back to punt again. This is the sixth punt for Berger today. Smith will let it go. Oh, and it takes a Colorado hop. Great punt by Mitch Berger down at the six-yard line. 11 minutes, 11 seconds to go. Kansas State scored twice against KU with eight and a half minutes to go. Can they pull that feet against Colorado? Well, you come back and we'll all find out together. Well, right now, are the chips down or are the chips up? <laughs> We're not sure. <laughs> Kansas State takes over on their own seven. I guess a little history lesson is due. Kansas State against Kansas was down 12 to 3 in the fourth quarter. They started their first drive at the seven yard line. That's where they start this one. Eric Gallen bulls ahead for five to the 12. Brian Diet stops him for Colorado. I guess the big uh, difference is that, that uh, Colorado's defense is only giving up 13 and a half points a game. Number one in the Big Eight, number 11 in the country in scoring defense. And so far, they're pitching a shutout against Kansas State, although they've been aided immeasurably by Kansas State's charity. Four turnovers for the Wildcats. Ball play to Gallon. He'll get it up to the 14-yard line. It's going to bring up third and about three. Beekert stopped him there. And Beekert is uh, he's the same type of inside linebacker that Brooks Barta is. Beekert has got two 20-tackle games to his credit already in his career. And when you come up with 20 tackles, boy, you're very active, obviously, in a single game. Big third down play here for Kansas State if they're going to get things going in their direction. Watson given time for a moment, and then look out. Steed was the first one there. And then also coming in to make the play defensively was Leonard Renfro. And Bill McCartney loves the way his defense has been playing over the last couple of weeks. And I'll tell you, th this was just a case of being overpowered up front, and one of the Colorado players is down. Let's listen to Bill McCartney as he talks about his defense. The last two weeks I am. We played very well against Mizzou and came back and held Oklahoma at 250 yards. Gundy hit 10 straight incompletions. Uh, Gundy throws about too well to throw 10 straight incompletions. We get some of the credit there. And it's our defense, with the exception of giving Gaddis a 40-yard run, I thought we played well. Well, he was talking about uh, his defensive effort, especially against Oklahoma. Brian Dyad gets up off that pile and Paul Watson getting up slowly for Kansas State. He's really taking some punishment here. And right there, that picture makes you wonder, will he be able to continue? That's true. Uh, you know, he, he's awful gimpy as he works his way off the field. This was a case of just being overpowered. And, and watch Joel Steed run a little stunt. He breaks free as he loops around his defensive cohort. Joel Steed is has now got Watson wrapped up, and Diet comes in, and so does Chad Brown to finish it off. I'll tell you, it's just right there now. It's, that's a situation where the quarterback's a sitting duck. 
And in that case, uh, it would be in the grasp in the National Football League, so we wouldn't have to go through that punishment. The one who got that stunt started, though, Dave, was Leonard Renfro. Yep. He got the penetration, and around the horn came Joel Steed. And Snyder will have to punt from his own end zone. Hudson waiting for it at the Kansas State 40. Good punch from Snyder. Backs Hudson all the way back up to his own 45. But he breaks into Kansas State. Terrifying fumble. Who's got it? I think Colorado. I oh, no. Too. No, they're saying Kansas State. No, he's signaling Colorado. I'm sorry. Yeah, Colorado fell on top of him. Maybe I'm cockeyed here. Looking, looking the wrong direction. Colorado is a fortunate move here. They almost turn it over, but not quite. Hudson fumbles the ball, but Colorado has it back. 